Today's apologists claim, evolution is not scientific, but creationism is. Creationists often make the claim that evolutionary theory is not scientific and that creationism is. Their usual tactic is not to defend creationism, which is extremely difficult to do, but to bring up what they believe are serious problems with the theory of evolution. They use such tactics as equating evolution with abiogenesis. Abiogenesis explains how the first life formed, whereas evolutionary theory explains how species diversified after the first life appeared making false claims about how evolution works, like saying we should frequently see species giving birth to different species in a single generation, pointing to hypotheses inspired by evolutionary theory that were proven false, as if arguments about specific details within the theory are somehow evidence against the theory itself, pointing to the rare hoax or bad data, which are always discovered and exposed by other evolutionary scientists testing the claims, which is how science works and why it is so effective. Pointing to current gaps in our knowledge, such as exactly how a particular biological feature evolved. In regards to that last point, what creationists conveniently ignore is that all scientific theories have gaps in their knowledge. A desire to help fill in those gaps is actually one of the reasons why many scientists go into a field. And certainly individual scientists can make mistakes, which is why the scientific method requires all claims to be reproducible by other scientists to verify those claims. Thus, theories are never considered completely infallible, but they form the basis of scientific reasoning because they have been tested extensively and are supported by the evidence. For example, Einstein's theory of general relativity does an incredible job of describing large-scale behavior of planets, stars, and the expansion of the universe, Meanwhile, quantum theory does a wonderful job describing the small-scale behavior of light, atoms, and fundamental particles. Both make numerous predictions that have been and continue to be repeatedly confirmed by the evidence. And both theories are so useful that we use one of them to precisely land vehicles on other planets, and the other to create computers vastly faster than conventional computers. However, if you scale relativity down far enough, gravity takes on infinite values. And if you scale quantum mechanics up far enough, a massive black hole consumes the universe. In other words, the two theories are currently incompatible because they are incomplete, and yet they are immensely successful at accurately describing our universe at their respective scales. So should we declare all theories false and discard them simply because they may be incomplete? Of course not. What matters is that they're useful and to be useful, they must make testable predictions that could potentially prove them false. This is called falsification, and it's a fundamental requirement of any scientific hypothesis or theory. If a testable prediction proves the theory false, the theory must be changed to fit the evidence, or discarded if it cannot be made to fit the evidence. That's what happened to Newton's theory of gravity, which was superseded by Einstein's theory of general relativity and general relativity will have to be changed to become compatible with quantum mechanics when the appropriate evidence is discovered. Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection has also changed over time. For instance, Darwin hypothesized that heredity is caused by seeds from the parents' cells blending together. The hypothesis turned out to be wrong, and evolutionary theory was later updated with Gregor Mendel's discoveries in heredity. The theory also incorporated later discoveries in genetics and the fossil record. At each step, the theory became increasingly comprehensive and accurate, making it the most successful theory in biology. So how do we evaluate the accuracy of a theory? As I already mentioned, it must make testable predictions that could potentially prove it false. Untestable predictions, predictions not actually made by the theory, and gaps in the theory are irrelevant. For example, does evolutionary theory predict we will find the first life form? No, it doesn't, simply because the earliest life is extremely unlikely to have left any fossil evidence. Does the theory predict we will find fossils representing every single step in the evolution of a particular feature? No, because less than 1% of all species are fossilized, which makes complete preservation of the evolutionary sequence of any particular feature highly unlikely. Again, one can't simply point to a theory's untestable predictions, non-predictions, and gaps, 
and claim that those are evidence the theory is false. Only the testable predictions matter. So what does evolutionary theory predict? Well, if all species evolved from a common ancestor, then we can make the following predictions. Transitional species must have existed. No species can have existed before its ancestor did. No vertebrate fossils could exist in Cambrian rock formations, for example. All species must be constructed using the same basic architecture that can be modified in some way. The more recently two species shared the same ancestor, the more of that same basic architecture they must share. There must be some mechanism that introduces change to that basic pattern upon which natural selection can act. The Earth must be far, far older than the common creationist claim of 6,000 to 10,000 years in order to account for the slow process of evolution. So, what does the evidence show? The first recognized transitional fossil, Archaeopteryx, was discovered two years after Darwin predicted transitional species had to exist. Since then, we have discovered hundreds or more transitional species in the fossil record. We've even managed to predict the physical characteristics a transitional species between fish and land vertebrates would possess and where it would be found in the fossil record. And then we went out and found it. In undisturbed geological strata, we have never even once found a descendant species appearing in the fossil record before its ancestral species appeared, meaning, for example, that no human fossils have ever been found in Jurassic formations. A century after Darwin's time, we discovered that all species use the exact same architecture for inheritance, DNA, or the simpler RNA for the simplest life forms. DNA comparisons show we share approximately 99.5% of our genes with other humans, 98% with chimpanzees, 93% with monkeys, 92% with mice, 90% with cats, 84% with dogs, 80% with cows, 60% with chickens, 44% with fruit flies, 26% with yeast, 18% with plants, and 7% with bacteria. The DNA of all species is constantly being modified by a variety of different mutations. Every human being, for example, contains many dozens of mutations not possessed by his or her parents. Natural selection tends to weed out the deleterious mutations and preserve the beneficial. Numerous dating techniques discovered over the past century have revealed the Earth to be 4.543 billion years old with a 1% margin of error long enough for the evolution of species to have taken place. These predictions and evidence alone clearly establish evolutionary theory as scientific. But what about creationism? What testable predictions does it make that could potentially prove it false, and thus qualify it as scientific? Well, the claims of a worldwide flood 4,300 years ago and millions of Israelites wandering around the Egyptian desert for 40 years make four testable predictions. But multiple lines of evidence have proven those claims false. If those are sufficient predictions to potentially prove creationism false, then creationism has been proven false and it is a failed hypothesis. If such claims are not sufficient predictions that could prove creationism false, then creationism makes no testable predictions that could prove it false. And thus, it is not scientific at all. Furthermore, a scientific theory provides insights into the phenomenon it explains, raising additional questions that can be investigated to further our understanding of the universe. That is certainly true for evolutionary theory, which offers practical insights and applications in medicine, artificial intelligence, robotics, and more. But that's not true for creationism. Creationism can't give any deeper insights into how the universe works, nor does it offer any practical applications. It simply concludes that God did it, and that's it. Any further understanding of how our universe works ends right there. Thus, the theory of evolution is a robust and well-supported scientific theory. Creationism is, at best, a failed hypothesis, and at worst, not scientific at all.